Did you know that there were secret tunnels underground right next to the Western Wall in Jerusalem? Shalom, friends. This is the Kiba Gersh with Israel in 5, where we give you everything Israel in five minutes. Please like and subscribe, and feel free to leave questions or share thoughts down below in the comments. It's amazing. When people think about Jerusalem, when they go to visit Jerusalem, they think about it and they go visit, of course, the Western Wall. It's a beautiful place. It's a powerful place. It's a spiritual place for people of, of all traditions and religions. Everyone's welcome there and invited to be there. But right next door, if you're facing the wall to the left, there's an entrance to something called the Western Wall Tunnel Tour. These tunnels were discovered at first by British archaeologists in the late 1800s, but really excavated and really uh, thoroughly discovered after the Sixth Day War in 1967, when Israeli archaeologists were allowed to enter this space for the first time. Many things have been discovered there. It's an incredible place to be, and it's an incredible place to walk through. When we think about the Western Wall, what, what is the Western Wall? Why is it called the Western Wall? It's part of a, um, a wall system that uh, created what we call the Temple Mount that was built 2,000 years ago by the last Jewish king, King Herod, appointed by the Romans, who was an incredible architect and built many, many large and lasting projects uh, that scattered and dotted the land of Israel. And in Jerusalem is probably one of his most important. He came, he saw the temple that stood there in his day, in his generation, and he said, okay, but we can make it much more uh, beautiful. We can make it larger, more accommodating for all the, the, the hundreds of thousands of pilgrims that come there multiple times a year. And that's what he did. And he really basically leveled out the, the mountain and he created a very large and flat surface for, for people to come. But as a result, that destabilized the area and he built these retaining walls all around uh, this this area of the temple, the Temple Mount, as we call it. And there was a wall in the north and then the south and on the east and on the west. And the western wall is part of that retaining wall. Now, only about 70 meters of it uh, is visible at the western wall plaza. That's the place where everyone goes and prays. But it continues for almost half a kilometer, right? It's about 480-something meters, right? So, so much of it, it is hidden out of view. Why is that? Because in the, in the Middle Ages, when the Muslims... <coughs> Patrol Jerusalem, they actually elevated the city. They built a series of arches and they built on top of these arches and the new buildings and homes went right up against the Western Wall. Therefore, not visible when you're just standing in the city and looking in that direction. Now, these tunnels are not really underground. They're underneath the arches. They're underneath these homes, right? But they're not technically underground. Back in the day, they were open uh, and exposed to the air. But today they are, you know, underneath uh, what's above, some of them being homes in the Arab quarter in the old city in Jerusalem. Some of these homes that abut the wall, literally the wall of their living room, let's say, is the Western Wall, right, with stones going back 2,000 years. Anyway, you enter into this tunnel and you're seeing amazing things. You're seeing history. You're literally touching the, the, the stones the entire way through for this is a half a kilometer walk that were put in place here 2,000 years ago by, by workers, by builders, right? Almost immediately you, you see the largest stone that is uh, in the wall, and that goes, uh, that weighs up to about 570 tons. It's massive, it's unbelievable. It makes you wonder how do they do this 2,000 years ago? How do they have the, the know-how and the wisdom and the machinery? Well, they did, and it's an incredible thing to see and to literally touch with your own hands. As you're walking uh, through, uh, every now and then you see um, kind of openings um, above your head. And this is where they would, uh, you know, basically drop their, their sewage, um, you know, freight from their homes, or their buildings into these, you know, uh, ancient kind of tunnels. Um, eventually you get to a very, very important spot uh, where you most likely will see a few people praying, usually women. All right. It's a little nook off to the side on the right side. And the people come there every single day and they pray there. They say Psalms. Uh, what's the reason? It's because that's the closest you can get to where the holiest part of the temple used to be, what we call the Holy of the Holies, in the temple that stood in Jerusalem two different times for hundreds of years each. According to Jewish tradition, where the temple stood is the holiest place on earth. And in the temple, the holiest place was the Holy of the Holies. It was, it was a place where only... Uh, one person, one time of the year, went in, and that was the high priest on Yom Kippur. He went in a few times that day, and the rest of the year, nobody ever went in. Right? That's where in the first temple, the Ark of the, Co of the Covenant was kept with the, with the Ten Commandments inside. And um, 
So that's the closest you can get to the Holy of the Holies without going onto the Temple Mount itself. And so many people find it very, very powerful to pray there. I've been there many times and I've seen many people standing there and praying. It's a very beautiful and powerful thing to see. Um, and as you continue on, you, you see all kinds of other things. You eventually get to a Roman road that goes back 2,000 years ago, um, very much reminiscent of the road that is by Robinson's Arch. If you've been there, that's at the southwestern corner of the Temple Mount. Um, you see a, a, a cistern, a collection of water, and a channel that goes to the back to the Hadmonian times, right in the story of Hanukkah, about 2,200 years ago. And uh, all along the way, archaeologists have found all kinds of incredible artifacts um, and um, you know remnants from the past. One of the greatest things they found there was a Roman theater. Um, and it just got discovered or revealed and shared with the public a few years ago. And they knew that it was there. People had been looking for many, many years, and they, they finally found it. Um, so really an incredible um, addition to an experience in Jerusalem to go to the Western Wall, not only to be there, of course, it's so powerful and beautiful and meaningful to pray there, and then to go into these tunnels and really ex experience and explore the rest of the Western Wall, which again goes on for another half a kilometer. Jerusalem is a, is a beautiful place. It's an ancient place. It's a, it's a place filled with so many secrets and mysteries, and this is probably one of the best of them.